So, you're studying really hard, you're trying different time management methods, and yet you're not seeing the results that you want. I totally understand your frustration. Get a pen and paper because here are some tips that really changed the way I study and helped me improve my results. Let's start with the biggest and most frustrating problem, which is that everyone tells us to understand and not memorize the material. But how do we actually do that? SQ3R. This is the study method that will help you learn the material and not blindly memorize everything. It stands for Survey, Question, Read, Recite, and Review. First, you skim through the entire topic. Do not write any notes. Just take a highlighter and note down the learning objectives, all the subtopics, important points, or any pictures and graphs that you come across. One highlighter color for subtopics and another color for important points. Do not underestimate this first step. It's extremely important for two reasons. The first reason is, if you choose to write notes, this is the time to identify which parts of the chapter are important. You see, if you have 50 pages of your textbook to study, you do not want to waste your time and do notes for every single page. Just skip to the parts that are important. I did this mistake in biology A-levels where I did notes on a lot of unimportant pages because I didn't read ahead, so as I was doing my notes, I thought every part was important, which it wasn't. The second reason why skimming through the entire chapter first is so important is because sometimes after hours of studying, I kind of forget what I'm even studying. I know some of you go through this as well. That happens because we've been focusing so much on each component of a chapter separately until we forget how to link all those concepts together. So to avoid that situation, you will want to write down the flow of the entire topic before you even start studying. That way, you can connect all the concepts together as you're studying and trust me, it's a lot easier to remember a lot of things when there is a flow to it rather than trying to remember a million different concepts separately. When you're revising, tell yourself, okay, this topic is about transport in plants. So first, we need to learn about the parts of the plant, then the function of those parts, then logically, the next step is to learn about the important processes of the plant, like transpiration and translocation. So once your exam is near, you can just look at the title of the topic and immediately know all the concepts and components of that topic. This tip is a total game changer. Next, you want to question yourself. Basically, you've already done your notes or studied one particular section. Now, you want to write as many questions as you can for that section. For this section on water transport from the root hair to the xylem alone, I can create six questions. Many of you have asked me how to form questions. It's actually really easy. Just imagine yourself as a teacher setting questions for a paper. Pause to read. Then, you will want to read the section again Find the answers for each question and paraphrase them. To save time, you can use Notion to do this where you just hit the slash key, scroll down to toggle list, then write your question and answer. You can hide your answer by clicking the arrow on the side. Keep in mind, if you want to remember something better, writing is always better than typing because you're mentally and physically engaging with the information. Don't waste your time by copying the answers from your textbook. And typing is fast, but it's not the best way to learn. These are forms of passive studying and I'll explain what they are later in the video. Next, after every section, you want to stop and recall all the questions that you've written down before. Do not continue with your study session until you can answer every single question that you've written down before that. I call this the ask and answer technique and it's a form of active recall which is the best, most efficient way of remembering something. I posted a video before explaining more details about this technique of remembering things and you can check it out here. The reason why questioning yourself is so effective is because our brains aren't satisfied if we don't have an answer to a question. Therefore, by studying using questions, it keeps our minds very engaged and active when we're learning and we won't move on to another topic until you can answer all the questions that you've written down before. Next, now it's time to review your material. Look back at the flow of the topic that you've drawn before you started studying this topic. If you can look at the title of the topic and correctly recite all the components and concepts in that topic in order in one go, then you've understood the topic well. 
Like always, I learned a lot of my study tips and productivity methods through Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers literally thousands of classes on anything from entrepreneurship to time management and my personal favorites, art and productivity. I really want you guys to watch this class called 5 Exercises to Make Your Big Goal a Reality by Kate Ahrens. She talks about how the biggest obstacle in your way of your goals is yourself. In lesson 6, you'll use one of the 5 worksheets that she provides to pinpoint exactly what your weaknesses are and to find out how to improve on them. The great thing is, you can watch this class for free as the first 1000 subscribers that click on the link in my description box will get a free 1 month trial of the premium membership for Skillshare. So you can watch all these professional videos to maximize your productivity or explore your creativity. There are many familiar faces on Skillshare that I've learned a lot from so you can and check them out too. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Next, you're most likely passive studying. If you don't have good results and you don't find that studying is something that's somewhat uncomfortable or difficult to do, you're probably not studying effectively. You see, things like highlighting your textbook, only listening to your lecture, and reading your notes over and over again is a completely useless way of studying. You reading the same thing over and over again makes you familiar with the material, it doesn't mean you understand it. The more you engage yourself physically and mentally when you're studying, the more you will understand what you're actually learning. This is called active studying. Basically, you would want to be taking down important points during your lecture, paraphrasing your answers, recalling information, and doing practice questions which we all have touched on just now. You would also want to be using as many approaches as possible as you want all that information to be stored in your long-term memory. So instead of just reading a chapter, you would want to teach it to someone else. Did you know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? Draw a mind map summarizing the entire chapter and watching more videos explaining the topic. The more you engage yourself with the information, the better. Just highlighting and typing your notes is not enough. Next, and arguably the most important, you study to score in the exam, you're not studying to learn. Your mindset when it comes to school makes a huge difference on both your mental health and your performance. You see, forgetting X as a filter, so your brain will try to learn as much information as it can and then it'll start to filter out things that it does not find important. So usually we have a few assessments that test a few topics, then a main exam at the end of the year that tests all the topics. So if you keep telling yourself that only exams are important and you'll only study for an exam, once that exam finishes, you're going to start to forget everything that you've learned so far. I'm sure all of us have experienced this before where we forget everything after an exam. So if you keep forgetting information after every small test, when it comes to your final exam, you're going to have to relearn every single thing in the syllabus so far because you've forgotten it all. So imagine having to cram one or two years worth of material for your final exam. Of course, you're not going to do well. I really don't like the mindset of, well, I'm not going to use this in real life anyway, so why should I study this? Why should I care? Unfortunately, yes, this is true. We're learning a lot of things that we have no use for in the future. But a lot of us use this as an excuse to be lazy. You see, it takes perseverance, hard work, and discipline to be able to study things that you may not have interest in or you may not find practical in the future. But these are life skills that you can use in your real life. So focus on the fact that you're building your character, not so much on your learning a lot of unnecessary things. You're doing nothing good for yourself by having that kind of negative mindset. Next, you don't have a study plan. You want to get a planner or print a calendar and write down all your important dates like assignments, events, and exams. It really surprises me how many students don't have a study plan. You might be like, oh, I just need to study these eight chapters. I don't need to write it down, but you should. Write down the date of your exam, your topics, and what exactly you need to study for each topic. Then separate them according to priority. I can't tell you how many times I've been overconfident and I chose not to plan only to have forgotten to study something important or not to have planned my time well and completely forgot about the exam. The more you plan, the less worrying you have to do. Next, you're not curious enough. 
and every participant might play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please do not skip the ads. Thank you! When you're studying, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things that you don't understand and a few moments where you go like, hmm, I wonder why is it like that? Make a list of every single thing that you don't understand and don't ignore your questions. Then take the time to ask your teacher, search the internet or watch videos to broaden your understanding and find those answers. The thing that most students don't realize is that if you can think of the question and the answer is not directly in your textbook, that question might come out for your exam. Because teachers find all kinds of sneaky ways to twist the question a little bit to confuse the majority of students. And if you're the minority that actually took the time to do the research and find the answer, then you'll get those extra marks. You have no idea how many times my curious little questions that I thought were not important actually came out for the exam. Next, you try to study more than you can handle. Go to your teacher or lecturer and ask them which topics are more popular or have more marks. Focus on that first. You can also find out which topics are more popular by going through past year papers. I understand that sometimes the subject might be very difficult or you're just studying last minute. If that's the case, it's better for you to study and excel in 5 out of the 8 topics rather than doing badly for all of them. For A-level economics, it's very obvious which topics are more popular than the others, so a lot of students just focus on that few topics and ended up scoring really well. Next, you're studying properly but you're answering wrongly. For subjects with a lot of essays, take the sample answers and write out the important points they used before you even start writing your own essays. I did this for both Bahasa Melayu and Economics and scored A plus for both because I was writing exactly what the examiners wanted. Also, when you're doing past your questions, write out your corrections in a different colored pen and study those before your exam. For every subject, I make a little booklet containing all my corrections and popular questions with their sample answers. That way, you can give the examiners exactly what they want and you can learn from your mistakes. If you've made it this far, comment down below if you're usually satisfied with your results or not, and I'd be sure to reply you. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it and turn on notifications and set it to all so that you do not miss out on any future uploads. Thank you all for 115,000 subscribers and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye bye!